And welcome back to Kids Space Online. We are so excited to be with you today. And it is officially July, which means, of course, it is freezing. And we are outside in the freezing. But the best part about it being July is that we are carrying on our series of faith. And in case you missed it in June, faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. Even if we can't see Jesus with our eyes, we can put our faith in Jesus and believe that he is always with us. We can follow Jesus' example with the way we show love and kindness to others. And we can share his love here, there, and everywhere. That is so true, Michelle. Now, one thing I can see is that we've got a lot of fun planned for today. So we are going to get straight into this morning with a game. Awesome. For today's game, we are going to do a scavenger hunt. Now, just because it is freezing and it's the middle of winter, we thought you would, we would get you up and running and around on a treasure hunt. So what are they looking for, Malia? So in a few seconds, we're going to give you guys just one minute. Yes, you heard that right. Only one minute okay. to find as many of these things as you can. Now, what might be really helpful is if you do this game as a family and get every single person to help you find something. Mm, that sounds like fun. OK, so the items we want you to look for are a beanie, just like mine, a scarf, a Bible, a candle and a warm blanket. All right, are you guys ready? Here is a list of items you need again. Get, set, go.
Oh, that was so epic. Yeah. And as you can see, we are outside, so we struggle to find some of those items. But hey, we've got beanies and scarves. Whoop, whoop. Why don't you pause us for just a few minutes and talk about some of the items you found? Why are they significant for winter time? And why are they significant for faith? Pause now and have a small discussion. And then when you're ready, unpause us for the awesome Bible story video coming up next. Hey, welcome to the Story Lab. This week we're talking about faith while we take a look at the story of God's most amazing gift to us. Hey, I'm Carter. And I'm Zeke. We're talking about faith. Which is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. I have never seen the country of Greece myself, but my aunt just sent me something really cool from Athens. Is that the, uh, the, um, uh, oh, I know this. The, oh, the Parthenon, part of the Acropolis, right? It sure is. Oh, let's take a closer look. Ready, set, move. The Acropolis in Athens, Greece was built centuries before Jesus on a rocky outcrop overlooking the sea. You know, this is a very awesome gift. I know, right? Whoa, your aunt dedicated some serious shipping weight to this. Yep. But it's got nothing on the real Acropolis. This building, the Parthenon, uses 22,000 tons of marble. Whoa, how do they hold all that up? The ancient Greeks used Doric columns for support. These columns are wider at the base, tapering up to a narrower top. They hold up beams to transfer weight. I want a closer look. Do you think we can take a trip to Athens? Not in the budget. But these are. Oh, cup game. A little focus here. Cups, Athens, columns. I know how we can create our own columns right here. Well, why didn't you say so? Let's, Let's make, make it. it. Here's your column. Wide at the bottom, narrower at the top. I don't know, it looks like a pretty pathetic column to me. See? Columns aren't meant to work alone. They have to share the weight. Step one, place six cups in two even rows on the floor. Step two, place a tray or a piece of cardboard on top of the cups. Step three, step on the tray. Uh, you first, architect. Check it out! Whoa, you crushed it! I mean, you crushed it by not crushing it. Your turn. Hmm. Can we take it up a level? Let's find out. Okay, you ready? Yep. Whew. Stepping up. You don't really need the extra height. How high can we go? What do you think we need for this? Step ladder, definitely. Gotcha. Whew. You ready, Zeke? Go for it. Get behind me, please. Just... Whoa! I think I can see Athens from up here. Speaking of which, our story today has a letter written to a church right across the sea from Athens. It's time for... The story before the story. Today, we're in the book of Ephesians, which is a letter written by Paul to the new believers in Ephesus. But before Ephesians, way back in the very beginning, out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to draw people back into relationship. So at the right time, God sent Jesus, God's very own son, to live among us. Jesus gave up his life and was killed. But on the third day, he rose to life. After Jesus returned to heaven, the early church grew quickly. The apostle Paul traveled thousands of miles to tell about Jesus and started many new churches, including the one in Ephesus. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everybody, call me Brian. So, 
Just as the name says, Paul wrote the letter of Ephesians to the church in, you guessed it, Ephesus. Now at that time, Ephesus was one of the greatest seaports in the world. It had grown up on the Aegean Sea right at the mouth of the Caister River. The city was at the hub of several major roads too. All of this meant that the people of Ephesus came from a wide variety of backgrounds and cultures, and the church in Ephesus reflected that. Jewish people and non-Jewish people, rich people and poor people, together. They were learning what it meant to follow Jesus. Now, Paul had twice been to Ephesus. The first time was just a short visit, but the second time, he stayed for more than two years. During this time, many people became believers and were baptized. Several years after his stay in Ephesus, Paul was arrested for preaching about Jesus and ended up imprisoned in Rome. But he didn't just sit around and let that time go to waste. The church at Ephesus was still on his heart. So he wrote them a letter. I am sending this letter to you, God's holy people in Ephesus. Because you belong to Christ Jesus, you are faithful. Through his letter, Paul wanted the believers to know that they were chosen by God through the work of Christ and adopted as sons and daughters. In chapter 2, Paul writes, God's grace has saved you because of your faith in Christ. Your salvation doesn't come from anything you do, it's God's gift. It is not based on anything you have done. No one can brag about earning it. Okay, there is so much packed into these two verses. So let's start with the word grace. Now we hear that tossed around a lot. You might have a, a grace period before getting fined on your overdue library book. Or maybe your dance teacher wants you to move with grace. Maybe your family says grace before a meal. But this grace, the kind of grace Paul writes about, means simply unmerited favor. Grace is getting something you don't deserve, something you didn't earn. You have nothing to do with it, except that someone chose you. You might think of it this way. Let's say you're at a big state fair with all kinds of awesome rides and games, but you don't have any tickets. All you can do is walk around and watch. You're left out of the fun. Then, out of nowhere, Someone who's leaving the fair offers you all of their remaining tickets. <laughs> you didn't ask for these tickets. You didn't pay a penny. But now, those tickets are yours. And you're about to have the time of your life. That sense of surprise and excitement, that's what it can feel like when somebody gives you a wonderful, unexpected gift. That's grace. And when it comes to the gift of salvation, that someone is God. You see, every single one of us has turned away from God, starting with the very first people. We've all done wrong things, and the consequences of that sin is separation from God. But Jesus changed all that. He took our consequences so that we can be saved, so that we don't have to be separated from God. Salvation starts in the heart of God. It's an outpouring of God's deep, deep love for us. Now God offers salvation to each one of us as grace, a complete and total gift. You might picture it like this. Say you're on a boat. You spot a school of colorful fish in the water below. So you lean way over the rail to see, so far over uh, that you lose your balance and fall in. You can't swim well. And you're desperate to keep your head above water. You gasp for air, but just as you think, you can't hold on any longer. The captain tosses out a life ring. Whew. Now you got something to hold on to. You're gonna make it. Even though you didn't do a thing to deserve it or earn it, your only job is to grab that life ring and hold on tight. Now it's tempting to think that there's something we can do to make us more deserving of God's gift, like, uh, like going to church, praying a lot, doing good stuff. And yeah, those are all really great things, but not one of them will help you earn life with God forever. We need God to do a work in our hearts. God gives us the grace to believe in who Jesus is and what he did for us. And only then are we able to put our faith in Jesus and choose to follow him. It's an incredible gift, one worth hearing again. 
God's grace has saved you because of your faith in Christ. Your salvation doesn't come from anything you do. It is God's gift. It is not based on anything you have done. No one can brag about earning it. The most awesome thing is that God offers this amazing gift to everyone. It doesn't matter where you're from, how you speak, what you look like, what you've done. God's grace is for you. Jesus is for you. Salvation is for you. So is that the end? Well, it's really more of a wide open door than an ending. You know, I've heard these verses before and it's really easy to just brush right past them. But if you actually stop and think about them, it's just, wow. It's truly amazing. So what's, what's our part, part in the story? story? Salvation is a wide open invitation to step into God's story. God made each of us in God's very own image to play a unique part in this epic adventure. And the first step is simply to believe in who Jesus is and what he's done for us. It doesn't have to be a big dramatic moment. And you won't suddenly magically have a life with no problems. Right, but over time, God will show you more and more about Jesus. God will give you grace to turn away from the wrong things you've done and choose to follow Jesus. You can simply talk to God in a quiet place on your own. But it's also a great idea to talk and pray with someone who's following Jesus for a while, like a parent or a small group leader. Yeah, and as you begin to experience God's amazing gift of salvation, you can share it with others. Because Jesus is for everyone. Bye, George, I think you've got it. See you next time. So, here's the thing. Jesus is a gift for everyone. And my gift to you is how to play the cup game. <sighs> Thanks for joining us in the story lab. See, See you next time. Okay, show me how. All right. Simple. Perfect. That is such an amazing truth that Paul shared with the people in Ephesus. Our salvation is a gift from mm. God. We don't have to do enough good things to get God to love us. God already loved us enough to send Jesus for us. Yeah, Jesus came and showed love to everyone he met. He taught amazing things about God. He performed miracles. He healed people and he died on the cross for our sins so that we could be forgiven. He did that for me, for you, for everyone in the whole world. Jesus is a gift for everyone. Here's the really cool part. The way we receive that amazing gift is by putting our faith in Jesus. I've done that and you can do that too. Be sure to talk to someone you trust if you want to know, to know more about how you can put your faith mm. in Jesus as your saviour. Every day of your life, your faith can grow as you understand more and more about what Jesus has done for you. It's really cool to talk to people who have been following Jesus for a while, to hear how they've put their faith in Jesus and how they've grown and gotten stronger. You might talk to a parent or a grandparent or your small group leader at church. Be sure to ask some questions and listen to their story of faith. And for your family discussion today, you might even get the chance to ask someone in your family about why Jesus is such an amazing gift and hear their faith story. But our question for today is how do you feel when you get a gift? How does this change the way you think about God as the gift giver or as the gift or you as the gift receiver? Sit with your family now and spend some time talking about the different things on your mind. We have so loved spending today with you in the freezing cold <laughs> and we're so keen to see you next week. <laughs>